Ten weeks ago, we started a series on the Ten Commandments. And if you're keeping track, that would mean today we're, we should be wrapping up. Um, it's been a really intriguing journey for Chuck and myself. Honestly, we were just saying this morning, we've learned a lot. Not so much about the specific behaviors represented in the Ten Commandments, but the intent behind the Ten Commandments. And so um, hopefully we recognize together this, their significance as being ten steps to freedom within a greater context of our freedom in Christ. And today we're wrapping up the series with the 10th commandment. And honestly, this one to me is the most confusing. And maybe it's just me. I'll bring you into my confusion in a few minutes. But what we'd like to do this morning is begin with the teaching from the Word and worship at the end. We started this way last September for a few weeks because what it does is it allows us to first... uh, come into the presence of God, to be exposed to the Word of God, and then understanding the Word of God to respond perhaps more appropriately. And so we sing at the end so we can pour ourselves into worship perhaps in a little deeper way, giving God our heart, soul, mind, and strength through song. So knowing that, uh, we don't want to just cross you up every week, but there's significance into the flipping of the order this morning. And this passage that you're about to hear from 1 Kings chapter 21 is a fascinating study on coveting, which is the 10th commandment. And so if you follow along, if you have your Bibles or you can look at the screens in front or behind and uh, just track with this as we expose the the story of of Ahab and Naboth and this uh, really intriguing uh, journey into coveting. So Carol Eilers is going to be reading scripture for us. The passage of the day is 1 Kings 21, 1 to 19. And if you're able, we'd like you to stand and face the middle of the room for the reading of God's word. Thank you. Sometime later, there was an incident involving a vineyard belonging to Naboth the Jezreelite. The vineyard was in Jezreel, close to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, Let me have your vineyard to use for a vegetable garden, since it is close to my palace. In exchange, I will give you a better vineyard, or if you prefer, I will pay you whatever it is worth. But Naboth replied, The Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my fathers. So Ahab went home, sullen and angry, because Naboth the Jezelite had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. He lay on his bed sulking and refused to eat. His wife Jezebel came in and asked him, Why are you so sullen? Why won't you eat? He answered her, Because I said to Naboth the Jezreelite, Sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard in its place. But he said, I will not give you my vineyard. Jezebel his wife said, Is this how you act as king over Israel? Get up and eat. Cheer up. I'll get you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, placed his seal on them, and sent them to the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth's city with him. In those letters she wrote, Proclaim a day of fasting, and seat Naboth in a prominent place. 